And now it's time to start with the first presentation that is the hidden side of e-waste impact consequences and solutions to deal with the most common e-waste at home. We are aware that lithium batteries can be found everywhere. Without those powerful energy packs, many modern devices could not work as they should. Or phones, or electric cars, laptops, and other small to large devices are equipped with different types of lithium-based batteries. But where do they come from? What happens with them when then they get disposed? And how can we make sure the lithium batteries get recycled if possible? So all these questions and many more are going to be answered by your first speaker, Kevin Negoro, who will speak today about one of the main sources of waste worldwide, e-waste. So let's see if our first, okay, our first speaker is here, is ready. So Kevin, now you can ask to share your screen. Let me welcome you to the stage. Hi, how are you? Hi, everyone. Thank you. Well, hi, super nice. I'm really super excited to have you here, our first exactly. speaker. Thank you. Okay. So, well, this is uh, the festival. We're starting with this topic. It's really interesting and we think it's really important. This is why we want to start with a lot of energy. And um, well, now I just don't want to steal more time from you. If you are ready to start, you can already share your screen and I will leave you on the stage. Thank you very much. One second. Okay. Do you see the, the presentation? Okay. Yes, we can see. <laughs> Okay, great. great. So I leave you here and I see you a bit later. Okay, in 20 minutes, huh? sharp. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for your time to uh, be present here for the presentation, The Hidden Side of E-Ways. And honestly, it's a bit weird for me still to talk to the screen and don't see the audience, but I guess you see me and um, and hear me so it's well if not just scream um so a very short um, abstract what this is about we're gonna have 20 minutes um plus around 10 minutes of q a later and we want to talk about electronic waste so electronic waste is a wide field of course we call it um w triple e as well waste of electric and electronic um, devices um, or equipment but in this presentation, it's all about batteries. And batteries, again, have a lot of um, sub-chapters, of course. Um, so today, we're going to speak about lithium batteries. And also them have another sub-chapters, and we're going to go into these details later. Um, but as time is running, I'm jumping to the agenda. So first, I'm going to shortly introduce myself and our organization, so you know who's talking to you. Um, I'm going to show some types of lithium batteries, um, the production of lithium ion batteries. Um, this is what LIB is standing for, the environmental impact of these batteries. Um, what happens to waste lithium ion batteries? Actually, how uh, should they be handled? How can they be treated and so on? <clears throat> and what could be general recommendations um, for now and for the future at your home? Um, but also on a global scale um, regarding lithium battery, uh, lithium ion batteries. So let's start with the intro. Um, yeah, my name is Kevin. I'm one of the founders and the managing director of Black Forest Solutions. And we are a um, Berlin based waste management company. And as you see on this map, we are based in Berlin, but we don't work in Berlin. Um, actually, we have projects mainly in the Middle East, in Latin America, in Southeast Asia, and some in Africa. We work since um, four years or four and a half years, and we do mainly two things. Um, the first one is that we are hazardous waste traders. And this means, this sounds weird, but this means that um, 
we go to countries where they don't have um, proper treatment um, or disposal um, facilities, for example, for chemical waste, um, for infectious medical waste, also for batteries. And then we go to the sites, we assess the situation, we repack the waste, um, we manage the transportation to Europe, um, and then we bring this waste, this mainly hazardous waste, um, to our partner disposal facilities, mainly in Germany, but also in Western Europe. Um, this is what we call hazardous waste trading. It's more than trading, it's also operations on site, um, but this is it. And on the other hand, um, we are technical consultants um, abroad, mainly for um, development agencies, for ministries of environments, and also for investors, but also for startups. Um, especially in the Middle East, um, for hazardous waste, medical waste, but also for WEEE, um, for biological waste, and so on. So many, many different topics in that. Mm. Yeah, and the presentation today is not so focused on Germany now uh, regarding the battery and battery disposal. I try to keep it a bit more global. Um, I know that many of you guys are not living in Germany. Um, this is why I hope uh, we made this general enough. Um, by the way, greetings to all my colleagues who hopefully listen now, and um, also my friends, especially from Iraq. I know that you're here. Thank you very much for your time. Um, and now back to the topic, lithium batteries. So lithium batteries is a wide, wide field, and we have 15 minutes left only, so I keep it short. Um, in general, we have commercial applications, um, which you might know. So you have electronic products at home. You have a lithium battery probably in your hand right now um, in form of your cell phone or on your desk as your laptop. On the other hand, we have industrial applications like renewable energy storage units and grid storages, um, mainly made of old uh, electric cars or EV uh, lithium batteries. When we go deeper a bit, um, and I think for today we won't go much deeper, but this is uh, an important point that also in lithium batteries we have different types, as I said in the beginning. So we have, um, first of all, primary batteries and primary batteries, not only for lithium, also in general, um, define batteries which are not rechargeable. So you put them into your uh, remote control and um, use it and one day it's empty, so you throw it away and put another one. And we have secondary batteries, which are usually traction batteries um, or rechargeable batteries. And this is um, what we usually have in our devices nowadays, like in electric cars, in our cell phones, and so on. Mm -hmm. And the types here, <clears throat> um, you see primary batteries are with methyl lithium, so it's usually uh, lithium metal hydride batteries. Um, the LIPS are usually lithium ion batteries. Um, these are the main types, but there are many, many others. So uh, the experts amongst you uh, might know that. Um, forgive me to not go into much more details now, but this is enough for this topic uh, for, for now. Um, another short excursus uh, to the history of lithium battery from my history channel. Um, shows only, we don't go through each point, but this shall show only that um, lithium batteries are of course known since decades and batteries themselves are known since, I don't know, more than a century. Um, I think electric cars were there before combustion, combustion cars were there. Um, but lithium batteries had their breakthrough around the year 2000. Um, due to the new devices like uh, cell phones and uh, laptops and so on, there was a demand for much um, much more power density for smaller packs um, for batteries which don't have um, uh, such a big standby off charge um, like other battery types like NICD and uh, the very old ones like the um, lead acid batteries which you find in cars nowadays as starter battery and so on. So we see that um, lithium batteries seems to be a very common thing nowadays, but actually like the real commercial big scale usage is not too long ago, like maybe 20 years. Um, and this brings us to a problem which we see in the waste management sector um, very often when there's a technical disruption, like 
PV panels or also um, flat screen monitors, LCD, CFL uh, monitors, or now the lithium batteries that after the uh, average lifetime, which is for an EV battery, so electric car battery, um, around 10 years, um, the first problems pop up. And in the beginning, well, it's just a single problem, but um, when a lot of electric cars get to the market, um, they get used and after a while um, they become waste or parts of them. Um, or they get damaged, then the uh, waste amount raises a lot. And for lithium batteries, we are not prepared for this. We come to this later first. Um, a very short excursus for the production of lithium ion batteries. This here just shows um, the numbers from 2013 to 2018. The rest are estimates and forecasts. In, <clears throat> in gigawatt hours, um, there was a lithium ion battery production in 2013 um, of 50 gigawatt hours um, and 2018 already tripled or more than tripled. And this trend is ongoing and the gigawatt hour or the capacity um, shown here can be equivalent to numbers or more or less equivalent to numbers of batteries. So you can imagine the the piles, the, the mountains of batteries, uh, waste batteries, which are coming to us um, will be huge. Um, common problems with raw materials. Um, this is a topic for another two hours presentation, of course, but just a very short glance that not only the waste batteries are a problem, but also the um, production of um, these batteries. We have um, mainly two types of mining of lithium. Um, which is outwashing and rock mining. Rock mining may be uh, mainly in um, the African Union and uh, outwashing, uh, the best example is Chile, um, where I guess all of you or some of you saw these pictures from um, these evaporation ponds in old salt lakes and so on, causing troubles to the farmers and more. Um, if this is interesting for you, there are a lot of great documentaries online um, to see the effects um, of, yeah, of the mining, rock mining or outwashing <clears throat> to produce lithium uh, ion batteries. It's not only about lithium, it's also other raw materials and raw metals. Um, we're going to see this in another slide. Uh, but first, <clears throat> on the left hand, we see the uh, worldwide um, consumption of lithium in 2016. And we see that already then, um, around 34% of the worldwide source lithium got into um, battery production. And now, like now, now, 2020 and the next five to 10 years, um, the consumption or the production and demand for lithium ion batteries, especially for electric cars and trucks, um, is rising a lot. And this will change this whole market overview again. On the right side, um, we see the most popular um, production centers for electric equipment um, and batteries um, worldwide. So we have China, Japan, South Korea, Belgium, Belgium, wherever, but uh, maybe as, um, as comparison in South Korea, but China, let's focus on China because it's the biggest player. And there we see the numbers from 2014 to 16, um, raising a lot. So the lithium ion battery production um, is on the rise. And here we see for China again, um, in the middle, the typical supply chain for the raw materials from um, Africa, from Congo mainly, Australia, Indonesia, Canada, Chile, so Latin America. Um, and we see that the production of lithium ion batteries causes a lot of supply chain um, logistics, a lot of risk as well, a lot of um, unfair treatment of workers as well, <clears throat> abuse, corruption, and so on. So a lot of problems. And um, as for uh, fair trade labels and so on, there are, of course, labels for uh, for these production chains. But um, yeah, seeing the reality often in our, uh, our on-site missions, um, there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, and I believe that we, as we, generation whatever, um, should try to cut these chains or to, um, to shorten these supply chains, um, not only to reduce the risk for manufacturers, but uh, just to lower the, um, the footprint 
of lithium ion batteries of electric cars in the future and so on because um, yeah for for mobility terms like um, I think we cannot go around it like around electric cars around uh, these weird teal scooters uh, standing around in the city and so on and if we use it then at least we should optimize it right um, and we come to this point later on because we have a reverse logistics chain as well uh, for the waste so first the environmental impact of lips and here we see this weird hover thingy i don't know uh, how this is called but it has a lithium ion battery and it burns and the guy is jumping whatever and here another picture um in general just a very short excursus um a few years back we used to ship more than 1000 tons of primary uh, lithium metal hydride batteries from uh, Central Asia to Europe for disposal. Uh, they were mostly intact, but some of them were also damaged. Um, and arriving in Germany, we had to bring them to a rotary kiln, so thermal treatment, because back then, back then, like a few years ago, um, there was no recycling solution for lithium batteries. So this is what I meant in the beginning. Um, when manufacturers start to use a new technology, disruption, da da da, um, they usually don't think about the, res or the, the, the aftermath, the recycling of their materials. And um, then we felt it because then we searched for a solution to dispose of or to recycle um, more than 1,000 tons of lithium batteries. Um, and there was no solution. So we had to bring it to a rotary kiln in Germany. And when we brought these batteries there, um, we threw them into the kiln one by one. And so what happened? Um, and what happened is that this rotary kiln is usually um, is usually used to only burn ammunition, uh, grenades, bombs, mines, and so on from war debris and, and stuff like that. And these battery packs, they were as big as a normal motorcycle battery. Um, they exploded harder than a hand grenade. And there we felt like, shit. Uh, <laughs> I mean, every, we saw that in laboratory videos and so on, but in real life, we thought like, shit. Uh, we are shipping bombs and um, since then a lot of things changed also in the logistics of waste batteries. We come to that later and here you just see some examples of uh, devices. You see the um, very left very left picture and the very right one is the cell phone. You see the usual blow up um, of the battery before it heats up after a short circuit. Um, on the left you see a, I think it was a forklift battery pack and on the right um, a laboratory test for a lithium battery explosion. Um, well, when I'm saying this, not only for our business, which is uh, actually shipping off hazardous waste to a proper disposal, um, but also for your home or for your surrounding, it's very important um, that you know about the dangers um, or the hazards of lithium ion batteries. And one is fire, second is explosion. Usually it starts with fires. And this year, this picture shows um, an incident in Berlin, August 2019. Um, so the problem of burning batteries, or other, the other way around, burning batteries, burning lithium batteries, um, recently became the number one reason for fires in waste disposal or waste processing uh, facilities in Germany. Um, this means when you throw your lithium ion battery into the... Um, yeah, it depends where you live, but uh, into the yellow bag or the, the, the black bag or whatsoever, um, it might end up in a processing unit for RDF or for thermal treatment or for recycling and so on. And if the poles of a lithium ion battery touches something else, uh, can create a short circuit, it can heat up. And then as waste management company, you have a pile of, for example, 500 tons of WEEE laying um, waiting for recycling, and there's one lithium ion battery somewhere hidden which is burning up inside this pile. Impossible to find it, impossible to, uh, to extinguish this fire as well. So, usually, they are just letting them uh, burning down uh, control in a controlled way. Um, this is another example also from Germany. Um, we have fires on landfills, like the upper one is not Germany, I think, but the lower. Uh, one on the right side, facility fires and so on. So 
many of the WEEE recycling units, which I know in Germany, um, have severe problems with fires due to household waste um, contaminated by lithium ion batteries. Um, this is just the nerd fact sheet, but maybe interesting for some of you. Um, so lithium ion batteries are declared as dangerous goods with the DG class eight um, for corrosive materials, mainly for the liquid electrolyte or the gel inside and nine for miscellaneous. Um, yeah, this is more, this is something what we look at when we uh, repack lithium batteries or hazardous waste in general, whereas lithium batteries are often not considered as hazardous waste officially. So here we see uh, actually the, um, the, the authorities and so on, they are also not really ready for, for the piles of lithium batteries because yeah, it's just too recent. Um, just one tip, when your phone now explodes in your hand, hopefully not, or sets on fire, um, then just use water to extinguish it for first um, and, and nothing else. Um, waste lithium ion battery handling. <clears throat> I have to hurry up a bit, unfortunately, but in general, um, this is the traditional way. So usually lithium ion batteries get discharged, um, either put to a, a energy consumption unit or a tool, then they get dismantled, then they go to thermal treatment, which is called pyrometallurgical treatment or processes, and then um, the material get, um, get extracted from the slag uh, in a very energy um, high consumption way. And um, this is the old way, and this is the reason why usually recycling of lithium ion batteries was not feasible and not done uh, until, uh, yeah, not so, not so long ago. And nowadays we have different technologies, thankfully, but not so long as well, like a few years only. And they work with different, uh, different, um, different processes, mainly hydrometallurgical, which means that you um, dismantle the battery, you grind it, um, you dissolve the, the ingredients and then you separate them in a much more efficient way than a thermal uh, smeltering of the whole unit. Um, if you have questions to that or want more information on that, there's a lot of um, videos and so on online or just get in touch with our team, which are also in the networking area. Um, this here is um, a very short overview of lithium ion battery recycling also a few years ago. And the top entry shows minus 150 euro. And this means that five years ago, um, you got 150 euro uh, per ton if we delivered um, high cobalt content lithium ion batteries uh, to the facility. The other types like low cobalt lye iron or um, lithium ion automotive batteries, which were hated by the facilities, um, we had to pay one to two euros per kilogram uh, for the disposal, which is crazy. So nowadays, uh, this looks uh, different, of course. I just want to show you the, that this is not too long ago that um, nobody was interested to recycle batteries or lithium ion batteries. This year, also crazy, this shows all the official recycling units worldwide um, for lithium ion batteries, especially for cars uh, today. So we have three units in North America, a few units in Europe, and two in China and one in Japan. So that's it. And you see that many parts of the world uh, are not covered, of course, whole Africa, uh, Middle East, Russia, um, Oceania, Indonesia, and so on. Nothing happens there. And this is actually what we face as a uh, private business that we get requests from, for example, Ghana to, um, to do something with batteries. And our only option is to ship them out uh, to Europe, um, where we face another problem because the most shipment companies don't like um, waste batteries because they're afraid we saw the pictures before um, that these batteries will set the ship on fire what happened before so a legal way for uh, disposal or what happens nowadays if uh, there's no solution for example in ghana um, the WEEE, not only batteries end up usually on landfills like this Akpogloshi, um, and get dismantled there and recycled uh, more or less in a very manual way, um, not friendly for the environment and especially not for the workers and uh, population on site. 
Um, but honestly, yeah, we need to find, if we get a request like this, we need to find someone who pays the whole uh, hassle to bring a battery from Ghana to Europe, for example, or to the next disposal facility, what is usually unrealistic. Um, what could be done or what are we doing right now is that we get requests from all over the world. You see the battery symbols. Uh, we have um, nowadays two recycling uh, facility partners in Germany for lithium batteries. Um, and yeah, we go on site, we repack the units, we bring them to Germany, and then we recycle them. And in future, this is of course not a long-term solution. So in future, um, it would be great to have decentralized recycling units um, worldwide on each continent, if possible in each um, country, because we have lithium ion batteries everywhere anyways. So I'm over the time already. So I'm just jumping through the uh, recommendations or the conclusions. So what can you do with your lips at home? Um, first is, sorry for everyone not in Germany, um, in your country it's maybe different, but in Germany there are many collection centers um, for hazardous waste and they usually also take batteries for free. So first of all, please, please don't throw your lithium ion batteries or lithium metal hydrate or whatever uh, to the bin. It's really dangerous, not only for the environment, also for the waste workers um, and in general. And a lot of recycling potential is lost, of course, as well. Um, please bring it to these collection points or collect it first at home. Um, if you want to store them at home or collect them in a bin, just look that the poles are covered with tape. Um, and then bring them to a collection point one day. Um, in general, like in a global scale, as I said, I think um, a solution will be decentralized recycling units, not the pyro metallurgical, but the most advanced ones um, in each country or at least on each continent, um, because we see in our daily business more and more problems um, with shipping these waste uh, batteries. So many shipping lines don't accept them any anymore. And yeah, to reduce the footprint again, CO2 uh, for the logistics, but also uh, the risk during the transportation for people um, and the environment. And uh, yeah, left bottom, you see um, as example, one, um, one packaging unit, which is usually used for damaged lithium ion batteries. Um, so you see it's, yeah, it's a big unit. It has thick walls, it has, um, it has overpressure valves and so on and so on. So there's a lot of hassle when you want to transport waste um, and especially uh, damaged lithium ion batteries. Um, yeah, so I cut a bit from our Q&A time, but this is it. Thank you very much for your attention and your interest. Um, if you want more information also, I think my team is around as well. If not, just give us a message. And um, yeah, I'm open for the questions now. Thank you very much. So, hi. Okay, thank you so much. I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, all well, good. So, thank you so much. Yes, we are a bit short on time for the Q&A, but uh, we have a couple of questions. So, let me go over. We can just give a super brief reply. So the first question is, there are some developments happening on thermal batteries. How far are we from there? And if that will be better alternative compared to lithium ion batteries? Thermal batteries, honestly, I'm not uh, a pro in battery technologies, but I have my colleagues for that. Um, in general, I can say that each, um, each technical upgrade of battery or new battery types, again, leads us to the new problem that we need new recycling units for it. Um, so hopefully, yeah, hopefully there will be new types, thermal batteries maybe or others, um, which lead to a more lifetime, longer lifetime and so on. But um, for now, we cannot tell. Because the, the core point is that usually the manufacturers don't care about the recycling and they don't know it themselves. So, yeah. And so good. Um, I hope the person get uh the answer that expected. And let's go to the second question. So given this explosive characteristics, should government be pushing electric vehicles? Um, so recently in Germany, there was a car accident and the firefighters could not get the woman out of 
uh, on time, given the explosion. So that didn't have good results. Um, what does the future of e-mobility hold with this fact? What is the solution? Um, yeah, I mean, such cases are there every time or everywhere for Tesla, for other manufacturers and so on. Um, I'm out of the automotive sector a bit. I used to work there at BMW, so I know a bit how they work. Um, and I know how it started with the first vehicles. Um, that they really took care, especially with uh, electronic vehicles, electric vehicles, but also with hydrogen vehicles, um, that the explosive units or the flammable units are really separated from the rest. And what I saw is that the modern um, battery types are, are really good. So um, when we ship electric vehicle batteries, we are honestly not so afraid, even if they're damaged. Um, we are more afraid about the small packs from cell phones, from laptops and so on. These are really dangerous and very hard to check um, because these batteries, they don't have a steering unit. They don't have a self-control unit. Uh, the big packs from electric vehicles they have. Um, so yeah, I mean, I cannot speak for every concern or every incident, but in general, these batteries are more or less safe. Okay. Good. So I see we have uh, one more question, but unfortunately, we are a bit out of time. We are really tied today with the time. So I really invite you to uh, write directly Kevin through the chat and ask them or Kevin, if you have some time now, you can also when now when you finish your presentation, you can also give the reply in the chat. So, well, from my side, it has a really uh, insightful view of this problem that I think we still need to keep uh, developing some solutions and keep working on it. And actually, it's really good also that you mentioned something about electric cars, because actually our next talk is going to be about sustainable mobility. So it's really uh, giving a good hint. Um, thank you so much for being here with us today. I hope you can stay the rest of the evening and you can also enjoy the other talks. And um, well, so thank you. Thank and you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you.